Pima is a, a language for describing sound and manipulating sound and creating sound. It's deep, but you can approach it in layers, one layer at a time. You can bring live input in through the microphone, up to eight channels coming in. Um, if you've prepared some disc tracks already, then you can also trigger the disc tracks and control the, the rate of playback uh, and the amplitude. This example has, I, I mapped it to the Wacom tablet so that you can trigger a disc track from the Wacom tablet and control its rate. So I'll just trigger one of them. And then I put something to count the triggers so that when I, I click here, I get Put the rate on the front to back and the back. for both. For both of them. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And you can also capture live input and um, capture it in RAM and then manipulate it. So, like in a live performance, if you want to capture and, and do the manipulation right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. And also you can do synthesis. So if you have something set up, uh, you could treat chemo like a synthesizer and send it MIDI key events from a from a keyboard or from from your DA or whatever. So I'll uh, try to play it from the keyboard. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's a continuous keyboard and so you can hear me playing out of time. At odd moments, no, 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 no. panting for the extra game of handball. When you ran for the plane in Delhi. At odd moments, panting for the extra game of handball. When you ran for the plane in Delhi, at odd moments, panting for the extra game of handball. Hmm. I like that. I like it because it still sounds like Hopkins. Yeah. And what do you call that? It's called random freak scale and blue points. <laughs> and this is the same text we're hearing, right? Yeah, but just a, it's mm. just randomly jumping around and yeah, yeah, I like that. The mm. Mm. I like to hear that with the musical sound, you know? Yeah, yeah. What, what, whatever you start with is mm -hmm. you know, yeah. based on the what you start with. So I can just start off with one tone, right? Yeah. And just mm. run it through that, huh? Yeah. Like, kind of like a sample and hold. And then you could even morph from the tone to the voice. Mm -hmm. so like or how both. <laughs> Mix them between each other. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, and it's making like a green cloud out of it. And you can also take the audio signal and turn that into a controller, use it as a controller. Huh? So this is going to track the frequency and the amplitude and and control a grain cloud. So once you've got material and you want to do kind of a mix of the material, um, you can use a mixer. And I'll just show this example of a a strange mixer. So I have uh, six different inputs and then I'm <coughs> controlling them so by the, the orientation of the <laughs> remote and the nunchuck. <laughs> because these have uh, accelerometers in them, so they're super sensitive, so they detect the acceleration due to gravity. So they, so you can tell whether you're holding, holding it this way or this way or this way because of the accelerometer.
And then I just use that to control the amplitude of different things in this mix. Can you tell us what the source elements are? Because <laughs> we're seeing a lot of moderation of I don't know what. Because, uh, walking in snow and the dog yeah. season. Okay. What's the water? Um, this is like water from the pipe. Okay. And, and a recording in a zoo of some animals. Okay. Well, anyway, you could get to it. <laughs> you could do kind of like a semaphore performance. <laughs> Now, how is this working? I don't know anything about that way. I don't have kids. I don't, I don't play uh, guitar here. If you start moving them, I was only using gravity, but if you move them, you can accelerate it even more. <laughs> you can use through the oscillator. And it's a uh, the space navigator. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, it's really like for 3D apps, right? Yeah, I think mostly people use it for Google Earth uh, for oh. traversing and stuff. Oh. And uh, so it's got it's kind of like a mouse, except that it's got uh, three dimensions of movement mm. in it. And <coughs> so I I did a, just a mo another kind of mixing example where I put in each corner I put different recordings of a that that Matteo Milani made. Um, so if if I and then the volume, the overall volume that you pull on it to go up and down. So and, uh, and then right now it's in the rain and then I'm gonna push on it to go up to where the bells are. And push this way to go to where the birds are. And then push down to go to where the kids are playing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so then you can point. This is just a different harmonic. <laughs> so the, I think the way it works is that there's a camera right there. There's like an infrared camera. And then there are two dots there. And uh, which you can't see them, but if you put a camera, I think like we could probably see it through, through what? the camera. You can actually see infrared lights when you look through a camera. And one of those. And then I put something to count the triggers so that when I, I click here, I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 One, two, three, four, five,